This is the specimen of the median section of head and neck. Here we can see this part is the cranial cavity. It is occupied by the brain. We can see in this specimen the covering of the brain that is dura mater here. This is the dura mater. In the cranial cavity here, in the cranium bone, anteriorly in the frontal bone, we find the frontal air sinus. So this is the triangular frontal air sinus. In the body of spinoid here, we see another sinus that is the spinoidal air sinus. So this is the frontal air sinus, this is the spinoidal air sinus. This large cavity which is opened up, it is actually broken up and soft tissue has been damaged. So we can see a large cavity inside. This one is the maxillary sinus. So this is the frontal sinus, spinoidal sinus and maxillary sinus. Apart from it here, where are small pockets, they are for the ethmoidal air sinus. So these are all paranasal sinuses, frontal, spinoidal, ethmoidal and a large maxillary sinus. So these are the sinuses which we see. In the later wall of the nose, there are elevations rest of the elevations are damaged but this is the scene which is the inferior nasal concha below the inferior nasal concha we have inferior meatus this opening of the maxillary sinus is seen into middle meatus in the superior meatus we see the opening of the ethmoidal sinus posterior ethmoidal sinus and still above it we see in a spinoethmoidal recess opening of this spinoidal sinus so this region is the nasal cavity below the nasal cavity we have a hard palate here and behind it we find a soft palate. Soft palate in the center we find a uvula. This region is uvula. So this whole thing is a soft palate formed by various muscles. Below this particular hard palate and soft palate we find oral cavity. In the oral cavity one of the most significant structure we can see here is the tongue. In the tongue we can see this muscle which is fan shaped that is the genioglossus. So this whole this particular part is the tongue. This is the oral cavity. This is the nasal cavity. Below this we find a larynx. So this structure is the larynx. As we can see that larynx is continuing here as a trachea. So larynx is formed by different cartilages. This one is the epiglottis. It is a fibrous cartilage, elastic cartilage. And this one is the thyroid cartilage which is hyaline cartilage. This one is a cricoid cartilage. It is also hyaline cartilage. While epiglottis is the only which is elastic cartilage similar to the pinna of ear and the nasal cartilage. So this is the epiglottis. Within the cavity we can see two different folds. The upper folds are known as vestibular folds, also known as false folds. The lower one is the true vocal cords or vocal folds. Between the vestibular fold and vocal folds we can see this cavity. This is known as the ventricle or the sinus. Below this vocal fold this part is known as infraglottic larynx. Above the vocal cord is supraglottic larynx. Supraglottic larynx is divided into the ventricle between vestibular and vocal folds and above the vestibular fold this region is known as vestibule. So these are the features which we see in the interior of the larynx. Behind the nasal cavity, oral cavity and the larynx, the continuous tube is known as the pharynx. The part of the pharynx which is behind the nasal cavity is known as nasopharynx. Part of the pharynx behind the oral cavity is known as oropharynx and part of the pharynx behind the larynx is known as laryngopharynx. Now seeing the features in the nasopharynx. We see here the opening which is known as opening of auditory tube. This is the opening of auditory tube which connects the nasopharynx to the middle ear cavity. Behind it there is an elevation which is known as the tubal elevation. It is formed by the cartilage of auditory tube. This one is formed by cartilage of auditory tube. Extending from it downwards is the fold which is known as salpingopharyngeal fold. Salpings means tube. So from auditory tube to the pharynx this fold is salpingopharyngeal fold. Behind this tubal elevation we find another small pocket. This pocket is known as pharyngeal recess or fossa of Rosenmuller. It's a significant region because sometimes the catheter may by mistake enters into the fossa rather than in the auditory tube for the uh, relieving the obstruction of the auditory tube. So these are the important features which we see in the uh, nasopharynx. In the oropharynx significant structure which we see is when we lift the fold of the soft palate we can see that there is a triangular shaped area here. This is the tonsillar fossa between two folds. Anteriorly this is the palatoglossal fold and posteriorly there is a palatopharyngeal fold. Between them this triangular area is known as tonsillar fossa which is occupied by palatine tonsil. So this is the feature which is seen in the oropharynx. In the laryngopharynx, 
when we just move the larynx we can see a depression here this depression is lateral to the cartilages of the larynx in the anterior wall of the laryngopharynx this particular fossa is known as pyriform fossa it's a common site for the lodgement of foreign bodies in children and even in adults like fish thorns so this is the pyriform fossa floor of pyriform fossa contains internal laryngeal nerve supplying inlet of larynx so these are the features which we see in the pharynx behind the pharynx we see the vertebral column this is formed by cervical vertebrae and between them this white structure we see is the intervertebral disc which is a secondary cartilaginous joint behind this is the vertebral foramen or vertebral canal throughout ultimately it contains the spinal cord so these are the features which we see in the median section of the head and neck